welcome back to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I've got the gameplay video for Dawn of Peacekeepers. Now if you missed the setup, go back and watch that video. This will be the actual gameplay. I'm not going to be getting into the setup at all at this point, so we're just going to jump right into the gameplay. And uh, I'm really excited to see how this works, so let's get down to the table. And uh, here is Dawn of Peacekeepers. May 4th, 3329. The political climate on the continent is worse than I feared, especially within the Macaw Empire of Axakuk. Some time ago, the Emperor and his court chose to punish House Kuchia, a once prestigious family, by taking away its lands. The exact terms of the punishment seem to be buried deep within the Imperial bureaucracy. What I do know is that the territory will eventually be returned to Kuchia, assuming that they start behaving as is expected from a member of the Imperial Court. Proud as they are, House Kuchia has chosen a different path. Through my contacts, it has come to my notice that they will not try to rein in their frustration anymore. Instead of enduring and letting things run their course, the Kuchia will try to seize control of a completely new area. From their ocelot neighbors, no less. Their rashness endangers the stability of the entire continent. As such, I have chosen to intervene. I will have to proceed with subtlety and caution since I don't want the situation to escalate further. I shall try to call in favors within both the Empire and the Ocelot Nation, Sakalhu. A steady flow of information from both nations is vital. I will also need eyes and ears on the field, talented individuals capable of suppressing engagements and preventing unnecessary bloodshed. Relevant information on suitable candidates has already been gathered. It's a leap of faith to let strangers in on my plans, and even more so to give them the authority to operate on my behalf but I fear I'm out of options. The future of our homeland is at stake. All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, just a real quick real quick recap of what's going on here. We've got the McCall faction over here. We have the Ocelot faction over here. The McCalls have six motivation. The Ocelots have four motivation right now. We've got two um, uh, Ocelot warriors, one Ocelot archer. We've got three McCall warriors and one uh, McCall commander named Commander uh, Soshi Yamak, I believe is how we'll pronounce that. Okay, and then here I am right here in the middle. My name is Yenar. I'm a, a heron, and her whole deal here is that she actually lives here in this area, uh, you know, in, in this area of South America where these two factions borders are up against each other and the tensions are rising, and she has a vested interest in trying to help uh, maintain the peace. Now the way she's gonna do that is we've gotta reduce both their motivations down into the green, the one or the two. Uh, and once both of them have their motivations down into the green, that means they are ready to withdraw. And when both are ready to withdraw, I've won. The hostilities have ceased for now. Now the, the main way that I know of right now to reduce the, uh, to, re to reduce their motivation is that they, I, they are gonna to have to die. Some of these guys are gonna to have to die. Uh, now, for actually over here, motivation could get reduced by this ocelot moving off of this tower because the tower is giving them one motivation. So if, if there's no ocelot on the tower, then there's no motivation. If one of them dies, then they go to one of these spaces here and the motivation gets reduced by one. Uh, so now the trick of course is over here, you can see the McCalls don't have a tower. They have three regular guys which would, if, I, if they all died, they'd bring me down to three, not quite good enough. I can't let the commander die. If he dies, they go straight to zero. But if the commander is injured, meaning he's taken, he has eight health, so four damage or more, then he will, that'll reduce motivation as well. So that's where we're at as far as uh, what's going on on the board. In my hand, I have these two cards, food poisoning, which lets me choose one of my undamaged companion units. A companion is any uh, unit that's in the same space as me, give it two damage tokens, and over here, uh, emergency care, choose one of your damaged companion units, remove two damage tokens from it. Both of them could let me move as well or provide two fortification. Now, I'm thinking that the Ocelot's gonna need some protection well before these guys do, because there's more of these units. They uh, also have a commander who's more powerful, so we're gonna have to look into probably maybe providing fortification for them or poisoning these guys. So here's what we do first. The first thing that happens is 
I have my adventure phase where I can play as many actions as I want. Uh, now, of course, right now I only have these two cards. So I only have two actions. At the end of the round, I'll draw four cards and, and then we can go from there. But let's, let's figure out what we want to do here. Okay, so I think what I want to do here is I want to kind of get the, the feel of how, how these, these guys are going to play out. Because remember, I've never played this game before. I don't really know how these units are going to move around. This guy's completely undefended. Both of these guys have some defense. And like I said, I do feel like the McCalls have the advantage here. All right, so I am going to play... I'm going to use this card to get the, the secure action here. So I get two fortification cubes. And I can place them in a adjacent space to where I'm at. Uh, you can never place fortification on a river or on the fountain up here. All right, so those are the places that those that these cannot go. So I am going to place one here, and then I've got a, I got one more, and I don't have to use it. But I mean, I, I think, like I said, let's let's just you know what, let's just see what happens. Let's go ahead and toss it. So. There'll be two fortification cubes here in that space, which essentially, uh, not essentially, which does give him two additional defense. Temporary defense, because as he takes damage, this will get uh, wiped out, unlike defense on the board that is permanent. But for now, there's two additional defense there. And of course, this card now goes into the discard pile. I'm gonna hold on to my food poisoning card for now and we'll see if that comes in handy a little bit later. Okay, so I'm ending my turn there. Now I draw four cards. Now it's it's important to, to note that you always draw four cards no matter how many players are in the game. If it was a four player game, each player would get one of these. If it was a two player game, each player would get two. If it was a three player game, the first player would get two and the other two players would get one each. So let's see what we've got here. So this is called Influence. It lets me look at, a, 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 in this case, one card of my uh, companion unit's order deck. So, if, you know, if I was in this space, then I could draw from either one of the uh, the McCaw's order decks and look at them and then reorder them if I wanted to. And obviously, I'm only drawing one, but there's there's reasons for that, which we can get into a little bit later. Now, obviously, two movement, got the one fortification, local contacts, look at one, at the, at one top card from any army's Order deck. All right, so here we've got natural materials, one influence, one movement, two secure. Uh, choose any space with a unit, place two fortification tokens on that space if possible. Here we've got uh, lost missive, one influence, one movement, two secure. Choose one of your companion units, discard a top card from its army's order deck. And carry pigeon, one influence, two movement, one secure choose another player to draw a card from the resource deck then they give one resource card to you if you're playing solo instead draw a card from the resource deck all right so it's basically a free draw next up is the army phase this is where we're going to draw from the armies uh, from the two different armies decks so let's start down here with the mccall we have evasive move all right so immediately after this task move each unit in this group backward one space it's normal speed uh, move units in the star uh, group forward. So, interesting. Okay, so it's evasive. So they're going to move forward and then move back. So we'll put that there. So again, normal speed. And now let's take a look at the ocelots. We've got bold cover. Roll the die based on the roll. Adjust the uh, range of each unit is that range or attack that is that's actually attack I'm sorry adjust the attack of each unit in this group until the end of the round all right so you can see the different there again normal speed cover units in the circle group gain plus two for this round okay you can see they're both normal speed right okay so then you look over here movement is always resolved before cover which is always resolved before strike all right, so let's take care of the McCall evasive move first. All right, so it, as we see on here, it's the circle group that's doing this. Um, and they, so we move them forward. So technically what's gonna happen is this is gonna move forward and this will move forward. But then we see evasive immediately after this task, move each unit in this group backward one space. So they'll move back this way. And now when a unit moves, if it's a companion of mine, I can move with it. So I'm actually gonna stay with the McCalls. 
move back because I may want to use some of those companion abilities to try to mess with their deck a little bit. But that is the McCall move. All right, so now we have the Ocelots. So the way this will work, and it's not really going to matter this time because, again, there's, they're doing cover. So, but you would roll this, and they got a 9. So if they were attacking, they would gain, uh, you can see here, plus 1, plus 1 attack. All right, but they're not attacking. The units in the circle group, which would be just this guy right here, gain plus two, to, 2 defense for the round. But, of course, the McCalls aren't attacking, so he's fine anyway. And that's the end of that. Now we move on to the, uh, the status phase. So all that happens in the status phase is I check the two game-in conditions. The first one is you lose a scenario if at least one side has zero motivation. That has not happened. And I win the side if both sides are ready to withdraw, which also has not happened. So we move right back into the adventure phase. All right, so the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'll play the Carrier Pigeon for its scheme. If you're playing solo, instead, draw a card from the resource deck. So let's just do that real quick. And we have mixed groups. Choose one of your companion units. Replace the insignia of its army task card with the uh, circle during this round. This scheme has no effect if the army unit if the army has no circle in its group. So that's just for the round, though. And you know what? And this guy actually already has a circle, so that's not going to uh, do anything there. So now I'm actually going to, I'll, I'll you know, I'm going to play this one first to draw from the McCall's. Do I want to do their ploy or their? I want to try to make sure. I want to try to make sure this guy gets into. Uh, has a, a good shot of getting into range or getting closer to uh, these guys so they can start attacking him uh, and maybe even manage to pull him away from the rest of the army. So, and I don't want this guy coming up yet because he could start causing some damage. So I will draw, I'm going to use influence, which you saw that card that, car that I just played had one influence. So I'll take from the order, from the task. All right, so we have the circle uh, group, which is what we want, but it's cover. Uh, units in the circle group gain plus two defense for the round, so we definitely are not going to want that to be up there. So let's let's actually uh, play one more card. We'll play local contacts to gain another influence. Here's another cover this time for the other group. Let's get another influence. We'll go with. We'll go with the Lost Missive. Hopefully we get something good here. Strike. Um, okay, strike. So that group's going to attack. Hmm. It's not really getting anything that I want. You know what? Okay, screw it. I'm just going to go ahead. I will play uh, Natural Materials to get another influence. And oh, this time we've got Change of Plans. So what that does is I take the, the change of plans card, put it with the rest of the tasks, take my discarded task from earlier, and shuffle them back together, and I'm left with those other three cards that I've drawn. So now I have to decide how I want to order these. And I guess we'll do cover. Oh, you know what I can do? Here, I'll, I'll put strike on top. Mm. Is he within range? He's got, he has three range. He has two range. So he's not within range. Neither is this guy. Let's we'll put strike on top for now and see what we can do next time. All right. And while I'm over here, I will go ahead and play food poisoning to get two damage tokens placed on this McCall right here. Now, the McCall warriors have five health. So he's at uh, three health left. All right, so now, of course, I gotta get my four new cards. One, two, three, four. We've got emergency care again, so we know that uh, remove two damage tokens, all right? Local contacts, look at the top card of any armor's order deck. Encouraging words, one influence to move, one secure. All your companion units have guard this round. Guard, let me, Refresh my memory on how guard works. 
so uh, so guard basically prioritizes those units to take an attack. So it's a good way to get somebody to start soaking up some damage. And uh, false order one influence to move one secure. Uh, cho choose. Choose one of your companion units. Look at one bottom card from its army's order deck. Either place the card on top of the corresponding deck or back to the bottom. Now let's see what these guys are going to do. So the McCaws have evasive strike. Oh, and this is actually pretty good. These are going to back up those units that uh, kind of start separating out these units from these two so maybe i can try to focus on getting these guys attacked and for the ocelots we have unexpected strike roll the die re-roll until a group with units is chosen okay replace the insignia on this order's task card so this card with the rolled insignia until the end of the round this takes priority over all other effects strike attack with units in the circle group so basically the only thing that could happen is instead of this guy attacking these two could attack instead, which actually would be pretty good because uh, this one has three range, which can get somebody, and this guy has two range. All right, so that actually could be good. So let's see, we've got normal and normal. They're both strikes. So these are gonna happen at the same time, which is pretty interesting. Um, so first, you know what, first let's see which so we have, we do have the cog, all right? So these two are gonna be attacking instead. And how, how are we gonna, how do we do this? Let's see. So it says they happen at the same time, attack with these guys, but they have only two range, one, two, so nothing happens. And then one, two, nothing happens there. And they move backwards. But and so this guy, one, two, three, one, two, three, they have the same priority. Oh, oh wait, hold on, that's not exactly right because let's look at the at the remember um attack resolution. Oh, I'm sorry. So closest enemy unit first, which as you can see. Oh, it actually would be this guy anyway. So for this guy to attack, you do a circle. You can see you do a circle around him here first, and then you go out one, and when you do that one, this guy gets caught up in it. So this guy's gonna receive the attack, all right? Um, otherwise, it would've been most damaged unit, so he would've received it anyway. All right, so we can see this is the Ocelot Archer who's attacking, and let me make sure there's not an order for the attacks to occur. All right, and so uh, the rules do say that all the units of a group try to attack the same target and actually it works out that way anyway because you can see circle around this guy and then come one out and circle and you hit him as well. Anyway, uh, they, they're going to attack the same guy and I'm pretty positive I'm right in saying that this guy is a valid target. So that's what we're going to go with and, and, and the rules do specify even if one of them is enough to kill him, they still try to go after the same guy and uh, as you can see, three damage, three damage, more than enough to take out this McCall warrior. All right, so this goes down here, and the, you can see lower the motivation one time, one each time a unit from this side is defeated, so now we're down to five motivation. And of course, these tokens are gone. Not only that, but we can't forget that because it was the evasive strike for the McCalls, they back up one space. Okay, so far, Emergency care doesn't seem to be one that I really need for what's going on right now in the scenario. I'm gonna use it to move. I don't have to use all my movement. I, and I, I get two movement, but I'm just gonna move up here to this guy. I'm then going to use encouraging words. All right, so now this companion unit has guard. So he's gonna be the priority target. I'm gonna leave that out there just to remind me of that. And I'm going to, well, let's use one of these real quick. I'll use, um, Local contacts, I'm gonna use the, oh, you know what, I can't, okay. I'm gonna use the scheme local contacts just to check the top card of the Ocelots, uh, their task to see, try to see if it's a strike. Okay, it's not, it's cover. So now what I'll do is use false order 
Um, oh, no, that's a companion unit. All right, well, okay, so that, I didn't think that one through. The Ocelots are gonna take cover. I mean, I guess I could go ahead and try to get some damage done over here. So, tell you what, I'll use False Order to look at the bottom uh, card from its, uh, from the McCall, from my companion's order deck, and try to guarantee a strike to go to the top. So let's see what we got here. On the bottom, we have move. All right, so I will leave that on the bottom. And maybe the other card up there is gonna be a strike. So let's get my next four resource cards. We've got friendly guide to influence to movement. You may move one of your companion units one space with you while you travel during this turn. You can't move a unit into a space containing an enemy unit. False order, we saw that one a minute ago. Uh, carrier pigeon, basically get to draw a card again and mix groups. Okay, so um, now let's see what the armies are gonna do. The macaws have just regular cover, all right? Units in the circle group gain plus two, and we already know that plus two defense. And we already know that the ocelots also are going to be taking cover. Oh, well, hold on, revoked cover. At the start of the army phase, cancel this task, cancel the task part of this order. Lower this side's uh, motivation by one. Oh boy, okay. So, so really basically what we have here is nothing really happens except for this revoked, which means over here, the ocelots are now down to three motivation. That's pretty rough having that card in there. Uh, that would be something to watch out for. I need to definitely be careful, especially once I get into the, the, the ready to withdraw section of the sideboard. All right, so now this of course gets discarded as, along with those order cards. So now, let's see. We really need to help uh, these ocelots catch up. They're losing their motivation. Um, so we're gonna go with friendly guide here. We're gonna use the scheme. You may move one of your companion units one space with you while you travel during this turn. All right, so and we will, uh, we're gonna play that. Obviously we're gonna be bringing this guy along for the ride. And you know, before we do anything, let's play Carrier Pigeon. Let's draw another, let's draw another resource card. All right, this has one influence, three movement, distraction. All your companion units range is reduced to one during this round. That's helpful, especially if this guy starts getting close up here again, because uh, he's got, um, well actually I guess, his big thing is actually that he has some extra defense. He's got the exact same range and damage as the rest of the people here. All right, so anyway, let's go, again, mixed groups. I just don't see that being super useful right now. Yeah, so, uh, so we're gonna use the movement from that. I'm gonna move one space here, which moves him into the river here, so he actually has one shatter. And let's go to move over here and maybe I can find something useful to do as a companion for the ocelots. And I think that's everything I will do right now. So let's draw my next four. Food poisoning, okay. Natural materials, this is the one where I can place two uh, fortification drugs. More food poisoning and emergency care. So what are the McCalls doing? Oh, here we go. Revoked cover at the start of the, we, we know what this does at the start of the army phase, cancel the task. They would have had cover. Uh, but that's gonna be revoked and they're gonna lose one motivation. So that's good for us. That's very good. That'll help us start catching up with the McCall. And now the Ocelots have, ooh, here we go. Surprise strike, this could be a very good term. Roll the die based on the roll, determine this ploy's speed, okay? And then strike, attack with units in the, in the cog group. So, well, the, it doesn't even matter what the speed is here because this happens at the start of the army phase. Uh, so cover doesn't happen. And revoked means we're going down. They now are at, I've already moved it, they're at four motivation now. All right, so that's done. And now we have the surprise. Uh, surprise portion doesn't really matter. 
but we have the strike, which is going to be these two guys, and they both have range, I'm fairly certain. Let's see. Uh, three range, so one, two, three. Absolutely has range, and he, of course, has range. He's adjacent, and they're dealing three damage, both of them dealing three damage to this guy. He only has five health, and he has one shatter, so he's definitely dead. Let's put this here, and they're down to three. So now we have both armies on even playing field. So now we, the next a couple of turns are going to be very important to make sure one of them doesn't pummel the other one too badly. Let's discard these and see what we're going to do next. Okay, so I think the best thing I can do right now is wreak a little bit of havoc in the uh, in the Ocelot ranks here. So first thing I'm going to do is play Food Poisoning, just as a reminder, that is choose one of your undamaged companion units, give it two damage tokens. So that ocelot warrior right there now has two damage they have he has five health so now let's go and we're going to move and again i really think emergency care is even less useful now because what i really need is for one person from each side to die again so we're going to use that to move and i think we'll just go to the well yeah, we'll go to this guy. He's got the temporary, uh, he's got the fortification there, which is temporary. And here we'll play Food Poisoning once again. Choose one of your undamaged companions, give it two damage tokens. There we go. And let's try to make sure that the macaws are going to move. All right, so I'm going to spend. Uh, natural materials to draw one card again. I'm trying to make sure that these guys move and We've got strike which is not what we're looking for uh, and, and here's here's something by the way, I'm not 100% sure on this I'll, I'll try to get an answer on this later, but if I were to draw this at the beginning of the round this would get discarded because there are no or not discarded It would actually be removed because there are no more circle guys out there circle group out there I'm not positive that happens when I'm just using influence. So I'm going to treat it like it does not, but I'm, I'm not 100% on that. Anyway, we're going to use false order now to get another influence. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Cool. You can see movement for the uh, star symbol there. So we're going to make sure that goes on top so that we can get these guys moving forward to get some combat happening here. And then I'll hold on to my last card, Distraction. So let's see what the next four resource cards are. All right, we've got oh, cool. Natural Materials, Mixed Groups, Lost Missive, and Friendly Guy. Now that could definitely be useful. So the McCalls have just regular moves. They're just going to move forward one space. All right, and then we've got regular strike for the ocelots. All right, and so both are normal speed for the ploy, but move happens prior to strike, so both of these guys will move forward one space. And then the ocelots will do regular strike, however, it's, it's just this is a circle group, and he has two range, so one, two, he can't hit anybody. So nothing happens, but we did get them a little bit closer at least. So now, so again, status phase. Obviously, neither of those statuses have occurred yet. So we, disc we get all this discarded, head back into the adventurer phase. All right, I'm going to use uh, this right here. Come on, friendly guide. All right, so obviously companion here, I can move him one space. And I mean, I don't see any reason to go more than one space. So, so we'll use uh, natural materials to move one space. Now, it's important to note these fortifications are for that space, not for that particular uh, unit. So those stay behind. Obviously, the damage tokens come with. And now, let's see if we can find a way 
let's let's see if uh, loss missive would be useful here. Uh, so we're going to use um, mixed groups for the influence to see what the top card of the ocelots are. Change of plans. All right, so right now we go ahead and have to shuffle all the discarded task cards back into the deck, which means any task could be up there now. Because really what we want is an attack, or strike, I should say. So I'm gonna use distraction for its one influence to look and see what's there now. It is a strike uh, from these guys. And so I'm fine with that. We'll leave that up there. I will hold on to Lost Missive. And now let's see what my next four cards are. Another Lost Missive, False Order, Lookout. Have I seen this? All your companion units have stealth until you leave your space, okay? And Distraction. So for the army phase, we have Swift Strike from the Macaws. The circle group, oh, well, hold on, look now. The circle group doesn't exist, right? So that is gone. And instead, what it will be? Change of plans, all right. So we're shuffling the task deck back together with the discard, with the discarded task uh, cards. And we have cover. All right, so the McCalls have swift cover. And the ocelots, have bold strike. All right, so we're gonna roll that die. Based on the roll, adjust the uh, damage. And then it's, uh, it is the cogs, like we said, because we knew we had that strike coming up, we're going to attack. So let's go ahead and roll that. Well, you know what? Swift, so first, units in the, so these two guys are going to have plus two defense for this now round. Let's roll the die. We got a nine again, so plus one damage from these two guys, all right? And does have range only on this guy. So that one can hit this guy because uh, she has three range. And this guy over here, he's got two range. So he actually can't hit anybody. So it's just, it's just her who's gonna get this guy right here. She deals three damage. Oh, but no, he's got stealth. So nothing happens, they can't hit anybody. Okay, all right, so nothing went on there. So let's discard these cards. You know, I'm not sure that there's anything I really need to do. I think I might just let them go at it. You know what, let's, let's take a look at some of the cards on top of that, see if, um, I think I want, I actually, mm, boom, these guys moving actually would be very bad. That would be really bad because if this guy, if she moves, they're gonna lose one, one motivation. Put, that'll put them down to two, which is where I want them, but both of these guys are so heavily damaged that they could potentially get wiped out and then the ocelots would lose and, and of course that means I lose. So I wanna make sure the ocelots don't have a move card. That's what I wanna do. So I'm, you know, instead of burning a whole bunch of cards, I'm just gonna use false order to try to pull something other than a move card off the bottom of the deck. And we have a cover card, perfect. So, and that will, actually it's cover for the circle, so it'll provide him with some cover, which, you know, I'm not the best thing in the world, but at least it's not a movement. So we're fine there, and I think that Uh, let's see, I guess what I could do is ensure, let's make, let's, you know what, let's make sure that the macaws have a strike. So I'm gonna discard this for the influence. And they do have a strike. Okay, perfect. So that's good. All right, so here we go. Let's see how this shakes out. So the McCall has closing strike. Just before this task, move each unit in this group forward one space. 
Uh, we're not playing a skirmish, okay? So this takes priority over all other effects. That's actually pretty good. Gets them within range. Okay. Now, of course, we know the ocelots are not... They're, they are not attacking. They have reckless cover, okay? Each unit in this group deals and takes double damage until the end of this round. Ooh, okay. After adjusting the incoming damage based on uh, you know those things right there. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what's gonna happen here. So first, uh, normal speed, normal speed. The cover happens first. This guy has plus two defense right now, okay? Then these guys are going to move forward one space, okay? And now they're gonna attack and they're both gonna attack this guy with a total of six damage uh, he's got two defense. Yeah, so he has so that goes down to four damage, but he's reckless, so he's taking double damage, so that's eight damage, so he's definitely dead. So he's gonna go here, and they are now ready to withdraw. All right, so now I just need to reduce, I just need to reduce the McCall uh, motivation by one, and I'll have done what I need to do to win the game. Oh, you know what? I just realized at the end of the last adventure phase, I did not draw. So, because I only have three cards and you draw four, so I have to have at least four. So let's go ahead and draw back up real quick. All right, encouraging words, lookout, carrier pigeon, and friendly guide. All right, so here we are back at the adventure phase. If I play this right, basically what I need to make sure is this McCall dies or this McCall, the commander, takes four damage. Either one of those scenarios, and I win the game, provided that nothing else terrible happens, of course. So I think what I need to do is, okay, if I move, let's go, well, let me find one of my one move. Um, well, real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the carrier pigeon, real quick, just to draw an additional. All right, so there we go, we got local contacts, all right. Um, I, my, lo my lost missive each have one move, but I want those just in case I need to discard something off the top of a deck. So I'll, I'll use the local contacts and, oh, hold on, that's, we'll use distraction, even though it has three movement. We we'll use distraction to come down here to this McCall and we're going to do the uh, encouraging words. So, He's now going to be, he's going to have guard, so he's going to be the priority target here. And now I want to try my best to make sure that the ocelots have strike on top of their deck. So I'm going to use friendly guide that has two influence. All right, there's strike. Oh, but that one is for somebody that doesn't exist anymore. So, and the other one is cover. Uh, I really wish... I gotta look up and see if I could have just discarded that one. But anyway, so let's, now we'll use, we'll use uh, Lookout. That strike, again, for the guy that doesn't exist. I bet I'm messing that rule up, y'all. I apologize if that's the case. I'll use Local Contacts, and we have Move. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put them in this order. So that these three are gonna end up getting uh, removed from the deck and then the cover will come up. All right, I'll keep my two local missives and pray this doesn't go south. All right, I guess I really should have used this after I uh, figured out what they were doing, but live and learn. So let's see what their orders are gonna be. Oh, well, we've got a change of plans here. Closing is the ploy, but we don't know what sort of closing they're going to do. Closing strike. Hmm. Let's see how this goes. All right. The ocelots. Have surprise strike. Oh, wait. But remember, so we have surprise, but we know that the circle is not there. Again, another circle. 
and another circle, and then we have cover. All right, so surprise cover. We've got to determine, so this is normal speed. We've got to determine what speed this is. A nine, so it is fast. So the cover is going to happen first, which is probably good. We'll so cover happens first, all right? And so both of these have plus two defense, and now we have the closing strike. So just before uh, this task, move each unit in your group forward one space. So he moves there, and I will go ahead and move with this one, just so I stay close. Now attack with this, with, oh wait, no, that's a circle though. Hold on, the, the closing's still gonna happen. The circle though, we don't have any circles, so that's a circle. Okay, it is still strike. All right, so this guy, I believe, will attack this one, and this guy will attack this one because, I mean, it's clearly uh, these are the closest ones to them, so I don't believe that it would forego this guy to attack up here or anything like that. So first off, the McCall uh, commander here will attack him with, he's got uh, three damage, but this guy has plus two defense, and he has one defense for this, so he actually is fine. And over here, same thing. Uh, three damage, but plus two defense, plus that. So no damage is done. So we are good to go there. And y'all, I forgot to draw the resource cards again. So let me do that. Here's right. what I was supposed to have drawn. Uh, another encouraging words, distraction, lookout, and emergency care. All right, so we are on the precipice of ending this thing. We just need the McCalls to lose. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to try to find uh, whatever that, that one was where the order gets redacted or whatever and so they lose a motivation. That's what I need to try to find in there. All right, so make this guy priority target and then I'm going to, do I wanna make him the priority target or do I want, you know what, let's, but before I try to make him the priority target, let's see if I can just find that one that I was talking about. Um, so I'm gonna discard distraction and we have regular, all right, not what I'm looking for. Discard lookout and we have swift. Discard lost missive. Revoked, there it is, that's what I want. Put that on top. Okay. Here we go. So really, I actually kinda wanna make sure, let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the top of, oh, that's, I can only look at macaws, I can't look. Y'all, I think, last time, I think I was looking at the ocelots and they weren't my companions. Sorry about that. If I was doing that, I'll, I'll make a note of it if I go back and see that I was doing that. When you're doing influence, you can only use influence on your companions. So, so yeah. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm going to, just in case an attack comes, I'm gonna make sure that he's the one that takes it and the commander remains safe. All right, so here we go. So we've got revoked move. Of course, the second part doesn't matter because revoked is going to uh, cancel that out. We have unexpected change of plans. So hold on, let me reshuffle. Unexpected cover. Okay, that's actually good. Um, so unexpected really isn't gonna do anything because I only have one type of group out there right now. This is where you could re-roll a group with, um, basically you could change the group by rolling a different one. So it doesn't matter because I only have one group out there. So this is this is the end. This is it right here because uh, this starts at the start of the army phase. You can see that I'm going to drop down into to the two there. So they are now ready to withdraw as well. And the move does nothing. And then up here, cover doesn't matter. They just take some cover. And now we go into the status phase. And I have won. All right, so here we go. You can see stop. Do not flip uh, more pages until a game end condition is met. You can see right here, you win the scenario. Both sides are ready to withdraw. All right, so I am gonna flip this page. If you don't want spoilers beyond the first scenario, here's where you can drop off, get off the train. But here we go, we're gonna flip on into the next page. All right, so scenario one completed. 
Each scenario can end in multiple ways marked with a brown notice game end state. These different developments are described after each scenario and will affect your upcoming games in various ways. You're required to only read the part concerning your scenario result. In addition to any new rule, in addition to any new rules. In this case, there are new outcome cards and guidelines on how to use the campaign log to track your progress. All right, so here we got some new rules and the campaign log. Oh, oh, look at this. That's interesting. So just because you lose doesn't mean that you necessarily have to play that over again. Because look at this. Here you got both sides withdrew, which is what I managed to do. Here, Scarlet McCall's won. And you can see you go on into scenario two anyway. And then here, Ocelot's won. And again, go into scenario two anyway. And this one, if both sides surrender simultaneously, that must be, okay, that's if somehow I managed to, to get both of them to zero, uh, zero motivation at the same time. So I'm not gonna go through and read all this uh, out loud. Well, you know what, let's, let's read the portion, let's just read this portion that actually applies to us. Expressing enthusiasm or relief aren't Maron's biggest strengths. Still, he felt both of them more than he had in years after hearing what the adventurers had accomplished. He put his thoughts on paper and sent the letter to the adventurers. I might even go as far as to admit that I had minor doubts about this plan, doubts that have now vanished. Don't let this first success lower your guard though. Future endeavors will need your full concentration and hubris born of success will only hinder you. If we continue involving ourselves in these matters and influencing the right folks, this incident can be over sooner than I dared to hope. The uh, Kutia scouts did not take over the outpost true, but their commanders will get the details about the border defenses. That is what they were after in the first place. What they chose to do with that information, what they choose to do with that information is out of our hands. At least for the time being, I will see what I can scrape together. Meanwhile, you should follow the river downstream where you'll find Mario, where you'll find Mariokin Bridge, the primary river crossing in the area. If House Kutcha decides to invade, that will be the obvious choice of route, and I will need you when they arrive. The letter ends with a wish and more words of encouragement. Good luck and safe travels. This was an important first step. Marin's letter was certainly something new for the adventurers. In their usual careers, appreciative words had been few and far between. Having finished reading the letter, the adventurers head east with their next mission fresh on their minds. Congratulations on fulfilling your victory condition in the first scenario. Both sides withdrew from the battlefield. Draw the out car, outcome card numbered one and read the rewards section of it. You can use this special effect once during scenario two. All right, so here you can see we've got this campaign deck. Uh, it says, stop, do not draw cards from this campaign deck until the game end condition is met in the first scenario. All right, so we did do that. Unlock contents of the campaign deck, 12 outcome cards. These form the new outcome deck. All right, so you can see, do not draw these cards until you are going to set up the second scenario. All right, so the game said I can Draw outcome uh, number one, outside resources, wine, cheese, fruit, sweets, spices, all from faraway lands with exotic names, all far above their pay grade, sent by an anonymous benefactor. After setup, draw two cards from the resource deck, show them to all players, and collectively decide which one or two players places them into their hands. So obviously just me. And then, oh, I see. All right, so... This is the reward section, and then this is a penalty section. So if it were, for instance, if it was a penalty section, they had a lot to move and very little time. Without a doubt, one or two crates would end up in pieces on the ground. After setup, collectively discard a total of two cards from your hands. All right, well, anyway, good thing I got this, so I'll get two extra resource cards at the beginning of the next game. Okay, so there we go. I won my first game, very excited about that. I'm also really excited to find out that this is a campaign that keeps moving forward even if you lose the scenario. That's pretty interesting to me. I'm very curious on how that's all gonna shake out as we get deeper. I believe it's uh, 12 scenarios, I think, total. So 
yeah, I mean, I had a really good time with this. I know that there's lots more units that could be involved in the game. There's definitely a lot of cards that need to be unlocked. And there's also a few boxes and a, some more envelopes. So a lot of stuff going on here. Very excited to get farther into it. Maybe uh, as I get deeper into the campaign, maybe around game six, I'll bring you another video and then maybe again at the, the, the end of the campaign. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Look in the description below for uh, ways you can support the channel. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.